It is a spectacular night in the Valley of the Sun. We welcome you to the University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona for the first ever Tostitos BCS National Championship game. The second ranked and once beaten University of Florida Gators go toe to toe with the undefeated and number one ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. This is a huge night and a proud night for football in Ohio, not just because Ohio State is playing, but the roots for both head coaches grew in Buckeye soil. Jim Tressel in Mentor, Ohio. Urban Meyer from Ashtabula. These two men follow the long shadows of Ohio football legends like Paul Brown, like Woody Hayes, who symbolized Ohio State football for a generation, and his successor, Earl Bruce, who tutored Meyer and Tressel when both were his assistants in Columbus. Graduate becomes full circle tonight as we welcome the SEC champion, University of Florida Gators. led by All-American safety Reggie Nelson faces its toughest challenge to date here tonight. For four year Gator starting quarterback Chris Leak a chance to silence his critics. Can he deliver Florida's second national title. Standing by on the field the fourth member of our broadcast team we welcome Chris Myers. Tom I'm with Urban Meyer as you mentioned coaching in the biggest game of his life against a, a school from his home state. Are you a little bit nervous. I'm excited. I won't say nervous. Excited. I'm excited for our players to let it rip a little bit and go play. This is the team that few, if any, thought would be here. Do you feel like the underdog? No, there's not. The, the people that matter are right over here in blue jerseys. We thought we had a good chance to get here if we took care of our business. A very confident Urban Meyer. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. All right, and it was a week ago watching with his wife, Julie, Boise State. She said it was the greatest game she ever saw. She nudged her husband. Urban told her, wait till we play. Tom, the wait is over. Chris, thank you. In its storied football history, Ohio State has won seven national championships, but number eight would be unique. No Buckeye team has ever started a season number one and finished a season number one. Why will they win tonight? We'll win it simply because everybody's playing for that guy next to him. No one's out there on the individual thing. Uh, no one's out there playing for themselves. We play for each other. We again go downstairs to Chris Myers. On the other sideline, Coach Jim Tressel, you have a chance to go wire to wire and add to the history of college football. What did you tell your team when you ran out on the field? Well, just to have fun. They've worked hard. They've prepared hard. They've done a great job. Now they can enjoy a great contest. Longest layoff in championship history from game being 51 days. How will your team handle that? How did you prepare for that? I know they want to get it kicked off. It's time to go, and I think they handled it well. All right, good luck, Coach. Thanks, Thanks for your time. All right, Tommy, it's time to kick it off, I think. 
Chris, thank you very much. And hi again, everybody, alongside the coach Barry Alvarez and Charles Davis. I'm Tom Brenneman, and welcome to the VCS National Championship game here on Fox. And coach, let's start with you. Defense is your forte. Ohio State averages nearly 40 points per game. They have weapons all over the field for quarterback Troy Smith. If you're Florida, how do you slow them down? First down's important. You want to hold them to three yards or less. That puts them in a passing situation. Now you match up your athletes with their athletes. You hope your athletes do match up because I'll tell you, Tom, they will have to play great on defense tonight to have a chance to beat the Buckeyes. And they have played great on defense the entire year. They averaged less than 14 points allowed per game. Mr. Davis, when the Gators have the football, some call it a matchup offense, others call it smoke and mirrors, razzle dazzle. What do you call it? Well, the Florida Gators call it a spread, but they come at you from enough angles to buckle your high school trigonometry teacher. They do it from a two quarterback system to start. Chris Leak, he's the passer. Tim Tebow, he's the runner. And since they don't have a traditional good tailback at running, to run the ball, they'll use their wide receivers in the pass game. Andre Caldwell, number five. Jamel Cornelius, number six. Cornelius Ingram, number seven. And Percy Harvin, number eight. They'll touch the ball in the run game and the pass game. So for Ohio State, the challenge tonight, a lot of smoke and mirrors, a lot of changes, a lot of lightning. Stay at home. Play good, sound, basic football. That'll give them a chance to win. We go downstairs and join the officials for tonight's coin toss with our military heroes representing Arizona Senator John McCain representing Florida Colonel Bud Day representing Ohio Corporal Ron Rosser also present for our coin toss the Fiesta Bowl chairman of the board Mrs. Ellie Siegler. All right captains you've uh, met yourselves now congratulations for obtaining this uh, great accomplishment in football I know you're very proud. First of all, I want to make sure you meet Senator John McCain. Captains meet Senator John McCain. We also have from Florida, Colonel Bud Day. Where's Bud? Colonel Day. Where's Bud? We have Colonel Bud Day there. And also uh, representing Ohio Corporate, Corporal Ron Russell. Okay. We're going to call the point to us. Now, Florida, you're the designated visitors. All right. What is your call? Heads or tails? Okay. Tail. You're going to call tails. See, that's heads and that's tails. So the call is tails, correct? Okay, Senator. Oh. Okay, that is tails. That is tails. Florida is on the top. All right. Step aside here. Florida has won the toss. They're going to defer to the second half. Ohio State? They want the ball. They want the ball. Which way do you want to kick? So the Buckeyes will get the football first. Their first year of football was 1890. Florida started play in 1906. They have never played until now. It's the VCS National Championship next on Fox. Well, the parking lot jam-packed with Buckeye fans and Gator fans some five hours before kickoff here tonight. And now nary an empty seat in the house at this spectacular first-year venue in the suburbs of Phoenix, Arizona, in Glendale, Arizona. Coach, get back to something we talked about during the pregame show. 51 days off since Ohio State played last in beating Michigan. Florida has played twice since that time. Is that a factor tonight? It has to be addressed. You have to address that. What Ohio State and Jim Tressel have done is sell their players. They believe in the plan that he's given them. They've gone good against good. They think they've kept up tempo. But I know in the back of his mind, he wants to set the pad. What I call set the pads. He wants to get out there and get hit and get a flow of the game and get a feel for this game. The Florida defensive coordinators reminded us that every big game Ohio State has played in over the last three years, they start with something different on offense. Yeah, it's always been a different wrinkle. You never know if they're going to come out three wides, four wides, five wides. Are they going to try and run the ball a little bit different? Who knows? We'll find out soon. Joey Ehas bangs it away, and this is Ted Ginn Jr. And across the 20, slips a couple of tackles, and Ginn down the sideline will race. 
race to the end zone. What a start for Ohio State. So much for 51 days off. This is how you solve it. Both teams take pride in their special teams, and Ohio State obviously with a huge play early. Reggie Nelson right there had an angle for a moment. Ted Ginn got to the sideline and essentially outran it from behind. Great blocking from his front wall. Aaron Petrie for the point after, and just like that, 16 seconds run off the clock. For Ted Ginn Jr., a 93-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. The first kickoff return for a touchdown by the Ohio State Buckeyes this season. And what a time to get your first. Absolutely. You talk about speed, and all we hear about is Southeast Conference speed, but there are too many people stacked on top of each other in the middle. Too many on top of each other. The, the kickoff team out of their lanes. Looked like a Heisman Trophy winner from Ohio State was pretty happy with that. Eddie George joining our Fox crew this evening. Well, Urban Meyer prides himself on special teams. He coaches the special teams. We saw him coaching, coaching little things the other day at practice. He's got to settle his team down. It's a shocker right now. Guys, let's just settle down. Let's go back to work. Let's turn right around and Let's see if we can get something back up the field. Let's get some field position. To me, it's as simple as this. Next play, guys. You've got to let that one go. We'll correct it on the, you know, on the sidelines, talk to the coaches. Next play. Don't let that one affect our kickoff return. That's the answer that Urban wanted. Exactly. That's, That's field why. position right back now. Let's go to work, guys. That's why you tell them next play, come right back at them with the same stuff. This is a Pac-10 officiating crew led by our referee Jack Foyard. First and foul. Face man. 15 yards in the run. First down. Right to the left of your screen. You see him grabbing right there and dragging him down. Looks like Percy Harvin's going to open in the backfield, Tom, number eight. Florida quarterback, 21 year old Charlotte, North Carolina native Chris Lee. His fourth year as a Gators starting quarterback, a 34 and 12 career record. That's the freshman Harvin in motion, and he get him the football immediately. And he is stuck. The 41 yard line, a gain of five, tackled there by the first team All American James Laurinaitis. Very young up front for the Gators. What a challenge they face in this Ohio State defensive front tonight. Weapons everywhere. Deshaun Wynn, the only player on the Gator roster from Ohio. They have opened this game without a traditional tailback. All wide receivers and a fullback. Jenkins shows blitz and he's coming. Leak rolling to the right. The catch is made, but short of the first down is Jamel Cornelius, the fifth year senior from Fort Meade, Florida. The Buckeyes allowed just 10 points per game on defense this season after losing nine of their 11 starters from last year. The only returning starters, Quinn Pitcock, a first team All American, and David Patterson. Laurenitis, we talked about him. Curtis Terry starts for the injured John Kerr. And in the secondary, Antonio Smith waited three years after walking on at Ohio State, and he's become their leader as an all-Big Ten performer. Third down and three. 
Not a run down ever for Florida without the lack, with the lack of a good tailback. Leak throws, catches made, and it's short of the first down. As Dallas Baker, it's very, very close depending on the spot. And that spot looked pretty generous. It might be good enough to move the chains. He, gave him a, he did give him a good spot. My initial thought was that he did not have a first down from where he landed. So I agree, it's a terrific spot for the Florida Gators. Dallas Baker coming back for the football made it closer than what it probably should have been. Chris Lee holds Florida school records for passing yards, completions, and attempts. Second only to Danny Werfel with 87 touchdown passes. He's come under tremendous fire from the Gator fans, many of whom want to see Tim Tebow. And we will see Tim Tebow tonight. They hand it off to Wynn. Cuts it back to the inside. He's down to the 33 yard line and tackled by number three, 33, Laurenitis. Time to take a look at our Ford keys to the game. The illusion is Tim Tebow and the wide receivers will be the running game and get out fast. They want to get on the board first. That didn't happen because of the return. Defensive discipline for Ohio State and solid tackling after a 51 day layoff. Getting backing, as you said, coach, setting the pads and being in proper hitting position. So key against a very quick Florida team. Ohio State wants to make sure that defensively that they're sound in everything they do. They're seeing some things new. You really can't replicate that in practice. Lee dumps it off to his fullback. Latsko, he has a first down in the 22 yard line. Billy Latsko, a fifth year senior, whose grandfather, Bill Latsko, was the quarterback for the Gators back in 1940. And here comes Tim Tebow in the game for the first time. The heralded true freshman from Jacksonville. In fact, Tebow has come in, and so too in the game is Chris Leak. We saw this in practice two days ago. Remember what we saw with Boise State, where they would motion a quarterback out and then have the tailback take it. Tim Tebow is a true quarterback doing that tonight. Tebow to run it up the gut. And he's to the 14 yard line. They use Tim Tebow is just like a running back. He is the running game, not the tailback. He is the key to their run attack. And watch where he's going to go, straight ahead, right at him. Just lets the lineman push the defensive lineman where they want to go, and he goes straight up. Nice trap block inside by the Florida offense. You actually outnumber the defense with that, with a fullback carrying empty backfield. You outnumber the defense out front, and you have a 235-pound tailback, in this case, running the football. Gain of seven for Tebow, who was the Gators' second leading rusher during the season. And the leap out of the shotgun. Throws caught by Dallas Baker. Touchdown, Gators. Saddle up, boys and girls. <laughs> we had a wild one here seven nights ago. Some early fireworks, boys. How about Florida on that one? Great sequence of play calling by Urban Meyer and his offensive coordinator, Dan Mullen. On the touchdown, overloaded to one side and came back to the single receiver side for the score. You know, you can practice all you want with your scout team, but they cannot simulate the speed of, of, the, of the shape of the, the different formations and the motions that you're going to get in the game. Seven plays, 46 yards. Leak hit on five of five. We are tied at seven. Well, for those of you just getting home from a long day's work, welcome. This was the opening kickoff. Ted Ginn Jr. racing 93 yards. His second career kickoff return for a touchdown. He's brought back six punts for touchdowns. And then after the great return by James, the face mask penalty capped off with a touchdown throw from Leak to Dallas Baker. And all is even and all is right again for Urban Meyer. And a terrific start for Florida's offense getting Chris Leak off early. As you know, in this ball game, they want to make sure their senior leadership came to the front. Anthony Gonzalez. Tackled in the 23 yard line, so only an eight yard return that time. Good special teams coming. Tackle made by Riley Cooper. We're back to Arizona in a minute. 
A 7-7 game, 10-21 still to play in the opening quarter, and now we get a look at the Heisman Trophy winner, Troy Smith. 25-2, his record is a Buckeye starting quarterback, including 10-1 against ranked teams, 3-0 against Michigan, and a winner in his only bowl start last year here in Arizona against Notre Dame. Play fake to Pittman. Smith throws and great coverage by Tremaine McCollum. We had an eye on Ted Ginn Jr. We look at the Buckeyes up front. Big, strong, athletic. Dadish, a third year starter, moves to center after playing tackle. Pittman back to back 1,000 yard rushing seasons. The dynamic duo they call him in Columbus of Anthony Gonzalez and Ted Ginn Jr. Jim Trestle, 54 years old, raised in Berea, Ohio. The sixth year at Ohio State has already won a national championship. Five wide receivers for Troy Smith, and he's going to run it. And not much room. Jarvis Moss and Brandon Seiler there to make the stop. A dynamite front four for the Gators. The best Ohio State has played this year. Harvey leads him in sacks with eight. Seiler, his job tonight to spy Troy Smith for plays just like that. And in the secondary, keep an eye on number one, Reggie Nelson, a first team All American. Let's watch as we go through the game. You have six defensive linemen that will continually substitute themselves. They Greg Madison, the defensive line coach, allows them to go. They want them to go as hard as they can. When they're tired, they self-substitute. Here's where you watch for number 11. And sacked from behind is Smith by Derek Harvey. A most impressive opening stand defensively for the Florida Gators. And the reason Derek Harvey was able to get there, actually two reasons. One, his speed and skill, but two, the secondary. The coverage back here was so good, he had nowhere to go with the ball. Did you see him clutch twice? Once, twice, thinking he's going to throw it, then Harvey gets to it. Credit the nickel secondary. Five defensive backs clamping down on Ohio State's wide receivers early. A.J. Trapasso, the sophomore from Pickerington, Ohio, is the Ohio State punter. The Gators figured a good, good field position. James comes up to get it from his own 40. And he's out to midfield. So the first floor of the drive started at the Ohio State 46. This one will start at midfield, and a late flag comes in. Well after the whistle had been blown. This may go against Ohio State. Tom, what I saw late was an Ohio State player take out a Florida player. Should be a personal foul. You're right. Florida takes the field again with a short field. The first touchdown was on a short field. And after this call. After the play, personal foul lay hit on the kicking team number six. That's Larry Grant. That's to the right of the screen coming up right there. Larry Grant. So again, great field position for the Gators looking for their first lead. The Gators on offense take it. The Gators on offense for the second time starting a drive in Ohio State territory. Let's see if they take a shot downtown right now. And after a timeout, I wouldn't be surprised if they go with some type of a counter off of something they've shown already. And Percy Harvin is taking the snap. And he's going to run it. Trying to stretch it to the outside, and he is leveled by Marcus Freeman. Boy, Percy Harvin, a true freshman out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, only 18 years young, the MVP of the Southeastern Conference Championship game. He rushed for better than 100 yards at 62 yards receiving in two touchdowns. He is something. He's a Reggie Bush type back. They want to use him like USC used Reggie Bush. They want him all over the field. They want the ball in his hands. A lot more like Reggie with the Saints this year. More as a, more as a receiver, but from the running back position, averaging over 11 yards per carry. Leap back in there out of the shotgun. A little delay to Deshaun Wynn. Still on his feet and tackled inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. 
Let's send it downstairs to Chris Myers. Tom, the Gators, one of those teams that script their first dozen or so offensive plays well in advance. And Urban Meyer wanted Chris Leak more involved. He visited his friend and coaching confidant, Bill Belichick, with the Patriots. Saw Tom Brady run the Thursday quarterback meeting and game plan meeting all by himself. And he said, our guy can do that. He put Chris Leak in charge. And ever since, it's worked out well. So far for the offense anyway, the script looks pretty good. Empty set. See if they come after him right here, Tom. That's win in motion, and Leak rolls right. Open receiver. Catch is made by Cornelius Ingram. He's inside the 10, close to the 5. A gain of 20. You know what I'm most impressed with right now with Florida? We watch them in warm-ups. And it seemed like it seems as if, as, as if their offense was very jittery. The ball was on the ground a lot. They had trouble snapping the ball out of shotgun. But so far, they've been very crisp and very precise. And Chris Leak is really on his game as a thrower right now. Boy, is he ever. He's hit on six of six for 55 yards. He's connected with five different receivers, but he's on the sideline. Tebow comes in first and goal at the seven. Might show a little option, option pass here out of him. They're used to him running it. Tebow inside the five. The ball came loose. Is it loose? No signal given by the officials. If he's down, no one made a definite call that we saw. And still no firm indication from a member of this Pac-10 officiating crew. Apparently, they're going to spot the ball at the four, or are they? Ruled down. There you have it. We thank Jack Pollard, our referee. Same play we saw him run the first time, just trapped it to the other side as he's going down. Ball being tugged out, see the knees and down, and then, be, then, it, then the ball is pulled out by number 55, Curtis Terry. So we noticed a lot of plays that, that he carries. There's always a discussion whether it's a fumble or not. <laughs> Leak back in, empty backfield, five wide receivers set. I don't think anybody's covering seven. He's got to slide out a little bit. Defensive back was showing blitz. Now he slid out into a spot. The option. Sniffing the end zone. Did he get in? Touchdown! Percy Harvin. To good returns on a kick, later a punt. Two key personal foul penalties by Ohio State coverage teams. Short fields to work with for the Gators. But real good execution. Offensively, they're executing. Charles, you mentioned that earlier. They were not crisp in pregame warm-up, but they have been clean and putting the ball in the freshman's hand. There may be some kind of review want taking to see if place. In, in fact, there is, as Jack Foyard. Nice option. You're going to see Percy Harvin, number eight, from right to left on your screen. He's the option back. And Tom, you said he was sniffing the end zone. Does he get in or not? And that's what they're reviewing right now. Did his knee go down before he stretched across? We'll get a better look here. He's down. Yeah, knee, knee about the two or three yard line. Yep, he's down. Now the question becomes is there conclusive? Video evidence. I believe they're going to take away this touchdown. I think I agree with you, Tom. I think they'll put the ball probably. There's the knee down right there. So I think the ball's down on probably the one yard line or maybe inside of it. Probably down maybe a one foot line because of where he was where he was falling forward. This is strictly a booth review. I don't think Jim Trestle is challenging the call no. on the field. No, what coaches can do. And coach, you 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 know no 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 flags and hankies in the college game, right? <laughs> but you can ask for a review, and a, one time during each half. And if it's upheld, you keep your time out. If you don't, yeah, I see two knees down before he yeah. falls forward. If it's not upheld, you lose the timeout. Right. But you know what? This is what's so good about the review that I like in college football. The officials up here, right there, have a chance to view it. If there's question, they'll stop the game and take a look at it. It's awfully important right here, isn't it? Only the biggest game in the year. <laughs> they better get it right. See, we're up here. We have Dave Perry, the national supervisor of officials, up here with us. 
After the kind of talking with him, doing a little sign language. Well, I think we all got fooled on that one. <laughs> fooled our booth. I think we all got fooled. All right. Chris Hetland, fifth year senior, has had a rough season, hitting only four of 13 on field goal attempts this year. This, of course, is the extra point, and it is good. Five plays. The Gators only had to go 34 yards. Florida, right number two, leads number one Ohio State 14 to 7. We're back in Glendale, Arizona. The Florida Gators with 5.51 to play in the opening quarter. Lead Ohio State 14 7. Line drive kick. And again, it's Anthony Gonzalez from his own five. Out across the 30. And Gonzalez covers that ball up with a good return out to the 35. Florida just trying to identify where Ted Ginn is and kicking away from him. Well, what a great week we have had here in the Grand Canyon State. The color, the pageantry, the excitement, the enthusiasm of a BCS National Championship game. Wow. This town got lively in the last two days, hasn't it? About three bowl games for this town in the last 11 days, and the first two were absolutely sensational. We're off to a great start here in the third one. Ohio State out of the eye formation. They'll give it to Antonio Pittman. And he's up to the 39 yard line. Quick throw. That is Brian Hartline, the freshman. And he is close to a first down, maybe a yard short. Going out there to get him is Derek Harvey. I think one of the questions Ohio State wants to answer early is how sharp will Troy Smith be early in the ball game? Heisman Trophy winners notorious for having to go to a lot of banquets and dinners and all that sort. I talked with Don McPherson, who finished second in the Heisman at Syracuse. He said he hardly ever practiced before his bowl game. Ohio State says that Troy Smith only missed three days of practice, so he really shouldn't be anything more, anything less than sharp in this ball game. A two tight end set, and they give it to Pittman, and he has a Buckeye first down up to the 47-yard line. That's one thing we certainly wondered about after visiting with both teams. Would Ohio State come out and try to get physical? And look now as Ted Ginn Jr. is limping off the field on his way to the Ohio State locker room. Let's send it downstairs for more on that with Chris Myers. Time on the Ohio State sideline. They took off his left shoe, changed padding in his left foot, and there seems to be a problem with him stepping and leaning, putting pressure. They're taking him into check on. Well, what a big blow that would be for Ohio State. Sacked is Smith again by Derek Harvey. That was a four-man pressure, and that for, for Florida's defense to be able to get that type type of pressure by only rushing four really allows them to do a number of things in the back end. Well, this isn't good. That is Derek Harvey. He leads the Gators in sacks with eight coming into the game, third most in the Southeastern Conference on the year. That is already his second sack in the game tonight. Came into the season with one career sack. Watch to the right of your screen. He just takes Kirk Barton, number 74, and pushes him back into Troy Smith, separates, and then runs Troy Smith down. Came into the season with one career sack, ended up the season with eight sacks, has two tonight. Not just speed on that play, but some power, too, knocking the bigger Kirk Barton back into a, Troy Smith. A great jump off the ball. First, great first step, but he got up under got up under him. Low man wins, right? Isn't that Absolutely. what you always teach him? And Low separated, man separated, and then he used his feet. You know, well, you those... hate to see such critical yes. players for both teams. Ginn already has walked off yep. the field, limped off the field, and now Harvey, at least sitting up, we'll see how he's able to come off the field. We certainly hope to have them both back quickly, but to your point, Coach, about the four-man rush, and he'll run off to the cheers Good. of the crowd, which is great to see. To your point about the four-man rush, Charlie Strong, Greg Madison, the co-coordinators, told us the best pressure they've gotten all year has been from their front. They've been able to get pressure without blitzing. So if they can continue to get that on Troy Smith and play coverage, they feel like they'll be in great shape this evening.
Stephen Harris, number 93, who plays a lot and has come on strong near the end of this season. Will take over for Harvey. Might have gotten Alex Boone, number 75, to jump. That's what Florida's going to claim. Those tackles are sitting there and they see the speed. They see the speed of the defensive ends, and he's trying to get a little jump on it. Trying to set up quicker and get his first step out on a pass play. Harvey being worked on. So they're tightening up the shoulder pads a little bit. This will be a second down and 25 for Ohio State. Here we are with 3.15 to play in the opening quarter and not a single yard of offense for the Buckeyes. And they've already committed three penalties. Generally, they don't commit many penalties. Florida, one of the most penalized teams in the country. And Smith out of the shotgun. Great coverage downfield. Drops it off to Pittman. And he steps out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Third and long of coming. Third down and 14 for Ohio State. It's a nickel package with three linebackers on the field with only three down linemen rushing. And here comes an all-out blitz. And it is intercepted at the 28-yard line. That's Reggie Lewis. Florida showed a three-man, showed three-man, a three-man rush, and then blitzed off the corner. There, Ohio State is one man short. They don't have enough people to block it. Coming from this side, right at Troy Smith, right in his face. And the hit put on him, and Ryan Smith in terrific coverage. Tremaine McCollum, number 18, the nickelback. As you said, Coach, coming from the corner position, he worked inside to the slot, came right at Troy Smith, and disrupted the play. And Reggie Lewis, now Brian Smith with the football. So now the Gators start this drive at their own 29 yard line. Inside handoff to Caldwell. Looked like he thought about throwing the ball. And he's out to the 32. It'll be a gain of four, second and six. Our dramatic overhead shots of tonight's Tostitos National Championship are provided by the DLP Ultimate Picture Cam. DLP is the official high-def TV of the BCS on Fox. DLP, it's amazing. It's the mirrors. Ohio State needs a stop on defense in order to get the entire team settled right now. Because Florida's had them on the run and actually has them playing back on their heels with all their motions and shifts and the way they're utilizing these wide receivers. Leak has been perfect on his first six throws. He's still perfect. That's Ingram across midfield of the 47. What a start for the senior Chris League who has come under so much fire from the Gator faithful. And watch the route. It's going to come Ingram from the tight end position on your left. Works into the middle. And Leak with a beautiful throw inside of Marcus Freeman, number one, and in front of Brandon Mitchell, number 32. He's playing off his own coverage. We felt like he'd be a factor in this game. He is a he is an unbelievable athlete, former basketball player for the Gators. And those Hoopers can do it, can't they? They know how to do it on the campus of Gainesville. Of course, Florida won the national championship in college basketball last year. Here's Leak under pressure this time. Wide open. And all the way down to the 29 is Jamel Cornelius. And they're finding lots of holes in this Buckeye defense. 18 yards on that play. I am loving the play calling of Urban Meyer and Dan Mullen because they're showing everything right now. That was almost a little bit of a delay route, getting it into the gap. Looked like they were pushing up deep. Threw it a little bit short after the receiver came out just a second late and found the dead spot in the zone. Florida piling up the yards, and their defense thus far has silenced Ohio State on offense. Bunch formation left. Now it's more of a bunch to the right side. Option leak pitches to Harvin. Inside the 25, tackle to the 23. Stop made by the redshirt freshman Donald Washington. And our aerial coverage of tonight's Tostitos National Championship game is brought to you by Budweiser Select. What a fabulous venue, this University of Phoenix Stadium. 
in the Phoenix suburb of Glendale, Arizona, which, of course, next year will be home to the Super Bowl. Looks like Deshaun Wynn, number 21, is back in the game. Their true tailback. And when he's been in the game, they put the ball in his hands. Little delay. It is Wynn. Trying to break it to the outside. And is shoved out of bounds by the safety, Brandon Mitchell. Loss of the yard, third and five upcoming. Well, Ohio State allows only 10 points per game. The first time this season, they've allowed two touchdowns in an opening quarter. The special teams has a lot to do with that so far tonight. They have, and Ohio State's not used to playing from behind. And this defense has been on the field quite a few snaps. One of our early keys. One of our early keys, Florida playing fast and getting out on top, and that's what they've done. Third and five, they need to get to the Ohio State 19. Leak steps up, throws, and very close to a first down is Andre Caldwell, the junior from Tampa, Florida, who threw a touchdown pass in that SEC championship game, and they will move the sticks again. And how sharp is Chris Leak and this Gator offense? Got eight, eight different players with touches already, averaging nearly eight yards per play. The wide receivers of Florida, they call themselves the Goons. After the movie The Goonies in the 80s, everyone all together, kind of a band of brothers, they felt that they were not getting enough credit compared with the Ohio State receivers. They're obviously out to prove, to prove their point this evening. Nines are wild for Lee. Nine attempts, nine completions, 99 yards. Went in motion, the option, and now the reverse. Coming the other way to Caldwell. All the way down, he leaps his way to the center. An offense like this really, at times, could put a defense back on its heels. You have so many looks, it, look, it appears as though you have, you're, you're, they're having problems matching up with all the different personnel groupings coming into the game. But there's so much being thrown at them, many times you can be back on your heels and not as crisp and not as aggressive as usual. What they've done is they've slowed Ohio State's defense down to where they're thinking instead of reacting and playing. Cloudy mind equals slow feet, and that's what's happening with Ohio State right now. First down and goal. We're down to the final 10 seconds here in the opening quarter. And Leak to throw it. And just throws it away. Clock stops with five seconds left in the quarter. Leak under pressure from the sophomore Lawrence Wilson out of Akron, Ohio. That may have been his first incompletion yep. of the evening, but it may be his best pass of the evening because he did the right thing. Got rid of it, didn't take the sack, no loss of yardage, and here comes the hammer now at quarterback number 15, Tim Tebow. Well, you ain't lying. I mean, he is big. Hey. I, couldn't read, I couldn't get over how big he was when you see him in person. And, you know, he lifted with the lineman when he first reported to campus. They had to back him off a little. He got up to about 250. Tebow looking for a hole. He is tackled down to the three-yard line by Jamario O'Neal, and that will be the final play of the opening quarter. The Florida Gators ranked number two in front of number one Ohio State. We're back after a word from your local Fox station. The Gators third and goal at the Buckeye two-yard line. And look, leak under center. Look at that. They're showing three in the backfield. Full heavy set. See if they go with some type of run pass option with leak. They give it to win. And the kid from Cincinnati gets into the end zone. A 10 play drive. Capped off. On a two-yard run by Deshaun Wynn. And how about this? Tell him, Coach, you thought that they'd hammer it with Tebow. Instead, I you did. saw Wynn, and you said to me, hey, I think he's going to pound it. Yeah. Win. Right now, they're doing whatever they want to do offensively. So here we are through one quarter and one play. Ohio State has one first down. The Gators have nine. 
and they have three touchdowns. Look at what they did with two fullbacks in the ball game. They used number 42, Billy Latsko, number 29, Eric Rutledge, and they led with Deshaun Wynn, pounded into the end zone. Now you sit back and wonder about that 51 days. I know Jim Tressel and his staff did not want to use that as an excuse, and you can't let that enter your players' minds, but the fact is, we haven't seen Ohio State play like this all year. See, the average has been 39 days in their bowl trips under Jim Tressel in terms of time off. 39, then to 51, you're adding about two weeks on, a little bit different territory. I had one like in the 99 or 2000 Rose Bowl, we had nearly 41 days off, 10 days less, and we played a sluggish first half. Maurice Wells has dropped back a Florida kid. Taking the place of Ted Ginn Jr., who brought the opening kickoff in this game back 93 yards for a touchdown. And Joey Ehas with a bouncing ball. It is picked up by Roy Hall, wide receiver, and he brings it out to the 35 yard line. Time to take a look at our Dodge game summary. Well, who would have thought that? The Buckeyes only one first down. You're talking about a team that averages almost 40 points per game and over 400 yards of offense per game. And Leak has been lights out. Zero rush yards for Ohio State. Coming into the game, everyone thought Ohio State had a huge advantage in running the football with Antonio Pittman and Chris Wells. Short drop, Smith under pressure again and throws in. Was the catch made? Yes, it was on the far side by the redshirt freshman Brian Hartline, but a penalty flag is on the field. It's right around good. the area where Troy Smith threw it. This might be a personal foul. Yes, be roughing. Yep. Boy, that's silly if you're a Gator. They had gained the advantage in penalties against Ohio State. That's kicking one back to the Buckeyes. It's important for Ohio State's offense to stay on the field here. Not only because of the score, but you've got to give your defense a rest. You've got to give them Take a look. Number 91 and then number 40, Siler at the end of the play is the one who picks up the penalty. See Harvey chasing him and Siler banging him at the end. Referee right on top of the Jack Foley. And after the 12-yard completion to Hartline, they march all the way down to the Florida 36-yard line. We you hear coach. it all the time about field position and penalties. And a lot of us say coach speak. How important wow. have those two areas been tonight? Both of these, Urban Meyer and Jim Tressel, have both been schooled in field position football. Regardless of what offense you run, it's about field position. Empty backfield, Smith. With lots of room to run. And the Heisman Trophy winner steps out of bounds inside the 25 to the 23. First down, Ohio State. A gain of 13. Let's send it downstairs to Chris Myers. Tom, the Buckeyes moving without Ted Ginn Jr. He remains in the Ohio State locker room. They were wrapping his left ankle, checking for further damage. The trainer ran back out, grabbed some different insoles, different types of shoes to try to get him back on the field unofficially right now. They hope that he'll be able to return. We just don't know when. There you get a look at his father, a legendary high school football coach at Glenville High School outside of Cleveland, who's been a great mentor not only to his son, but to quarterback Troy Smith. And that's Antonio Pittman. Carries down to the 17 yard line. Get a look at the rushing yards for Ohio State. Certainly, one thing to keep in mind for many who follow the pro game in the college game, if you're sacked, they take the yards off rushing yards. In the pro game, it comes off the passing yards. We've seen two sacks already of Troy Smith tonight, which has hurt that average. But he will need to use his legs, as he did on a, a couple of plays ago, to sting him. Antonio Pittman again, and he breaks it to the outside. Cuts it back. Touchdown, Pittman! And 
Antonio Pittman from Akron Bucktel High School, his 14th rushing touchdown this season. And now the Buckeyes get a little momentum. And get a chance to exhale a little bit as everyone was getting uptight because of the way the score was going, the way the game was going. That was a very settling drive for Ohio State, aided by the early penalty against Florida. Henry the point after, and it is good. 21 14, Florida. This right is Ohio here. State power football. Watch to the left side. Bang. Great blocking up front, and then Pittman bends it back and dives into the end zone. Got great blocks from wide receivers Gonzalez and Robisky. I don't think history and tradition necessarily make one team play better. Um, now, part of history and tradition is the responsibility you have to live up to it. A burden that we welcome and we're excited about, and hopefully we'll be able to add to the, to the great tradition. Ted Ginn Jr. has made his way out of the Ohio State locker room, and his daddy wants to know, how's he doing? <laughs> Oh, coach. Coach wants him back there. And, and coach better get an answer, too. <laughs> Booming kick by Petrie. And it's through the end zone, so the Gators will get it out to 20. We have 13 27 to play until halftime. And it's been a wild start at 21 14, Florida. Our aerial coverage of tonight's Tostitos National Championship game is brought to you by Budweiser Select. This is a very important series for the Ohio State defense. They haven't slowed Florida down yet. They have to have something or a series. They've got a little momentum. They've got to hang on to that momentum. And for confidence, they've got to be able to make a stop in this on this defensive series. Their offense gave them a spark. It's up to them to continue to ignite the flame. Fullback in motion. Leak again rolls to the right and just throws it away. Nobody open. Was under pressure from the sophomore out of Detroit, Michigan, Vernon Golston. A linebacker turned defensive end, and they think he has a chance to be a great one. He's complete control in this game for Florida. And you look at the ball control numbers, time of possession, people get hung up on that. But look at the number of plays that they've run. So many more than Ohio State. Ohio State lost a series on the kick return by Ginn. But thus far tonight, a, a Florida's offense has controlled things for the most part. And it's hard to do when you don't have a running game. But Urban Myers has done an excellent job of incorporating short passing game and everyone in the running game. Leak across the middle, catches made, and see on the spot forward progress appeared to get him to the 30 on the catch made by Jamel Cornelius and according to our yellow line it's good enough it Ohio. is Ohio State plays strictly zone defense there are a lot of seams and open areas in zone defense the Florida receivers are finding the soft spots Leak likes to throw against zone defense particularly when he has time to plan his feet and he can step into the throw. But there are a lot of scenes. And what they're doing is isolating against the linebackers even in zone and they love that matchup. Wide receiver on linebacker. Andre Caldwell in motion. They'll hand it off on first down to win. Stiff arms one time where right behind him is Malcolm Jenkins. Bolston got stiff on. It gives you an idea how strong the win is. Let's go downstairs to Chris Myers. On the Buckeye bench stop, Tim Haycock, Jim Haycock, the defensive coordinator of Ohio State, had huddled the defense after the last series, reminding them that no matter what formation or who takes the snap for Florida, stay with fundamentals, he said. Stay sound. One of the coaches said, don't let the frosting get in the way of the cake you're trying to eat. <laughs> great stuff. <laughs> Second down 11. Drop it off to Harvin. And he is slammed down at the 35. So a big third down upcoming.
keeping eye on number seven against the linebackers. Matched up against linebackers. Luke floats it over the middle. Catch made by Baker and another Florida first down. You know what's most impressive about what they're doing right now is that their wide receivers are truly fearless. They do not mind working the inside seams of the defense. And this young man, Dallas Baker, he was a guy that, frankly, Urban Meyer didn't think he, he didn't think he was going to make it very long with him. He called him into his office and called him a clown. Said your teammates are laughing at you. You need a better work ethic. The kid took the words to heart, and by God, he's going. He graduated already and has become one of their key performers. Lake on first down from his own 43, and looking for the big ball. His arm got deflected, and he sails out of bounds. Vernon Bolston along with David Patterson both right there look like Patterson made contact with Lee. That's the first pressure that Ohio State has had thus far. Any pass, that's the first time where they, they, where, they, where they put it where they really put him down. A couple times he threw it away. But Tom, you called number 50's number a lot in free, you know, it's increased in frequency in the last few plays. He's the guy that they compare to Will Smith. They're great All-American on their championship team in 2002. They move him around, can do a variety of things with him, and he's really making his presence felt now. Leak will spend a timeout. Play clock had gotten down inside of five. 21-14 Florida. We still have 10.34 to play until halftime. So many playmakers on this Florida offense right across the board as you talked about Charles five six seven and eight making it happen. All playmakers and they're joined by number 81 Dallas Baker. He just has the misfortune of having a number that's not in sequence. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get the same he's mention. Their, and he's their go to guy. Yes. He's been, all season he's been a go to guy. Second down and ten for Lee. Baker will be tackled for a loss of one. Great coverage and a solid open field tackle by Malcolm Jenkins. In the break, we talked about the lack of pressure we've seen thus far from Ohio State, but it's starting to pick up. Vernon Golston previously, there was pressure on Leak on that pass. But Ohio State wants, Jim Heacock, the defensive Haycock, the defense coordinator, wants his pressure from the front so he can play zone and not let those receivers get behind his defense. He has stayed very patient. Third down and 12 for the Gators. And in Ohio State get a stop. Throw, good coverage, incomplete. And for the first time tonight, the Florida Gators are forced to punt. Coach Alvarez, you said that's what Ohio State needed defensively. They needed to stop now. They're against zone coverage. Excellent play by the linebackers. Bracketed it off. Laurinaitis all over it. And not just that, they had coverage on the backside where he, Chris Leak wanted to throw the ball initially on the isolated one-on-one -on -one side. That took that away. He had to come back inside. Laurinaitis all over the play. Anthony Gonzalez stands at his own 15. We'll see if Ted Ginn Jr. returns when the Buckeyes get the football on offense. Eric Wilbur, an outstanding punter for the Gators. This one will roll through the end zone. Ohio State will get it after a 59-yard punt by Wilbur. He's one of the nation's best. Will Ted Ginn Jr. return? We'll know in a minute. Not looking real good right now for the Buckeye star. Ted Ginn Jr. left ankle injured. That's Olympic track star Butch Reynolds, the speed coach for the Buckeyes, working with him moments ago. His eyes watering. Ginn Sr. was told by the trainer they hope to get him in the game at some point. But right now, Ted Ginn Jr. not able to play and upset, stopping his feet on the bench, saying, I want to go in there. But the coach's decision now is to hold him off because of that ankle time. Great stuff, Chris. We thank you. And Troy Smith out of the eye formation to throw on first down. Unbelievable protection. Looked like he had to just get rid of it, throws it away. Got an eye on Anthony Gonzalez. Boy, a rare breed in the college football world indeed is Anthony Gonzalez. Not only a sensational player, clutch receiver, but a 4.0 academic student who majors in philosophy and has said long after his football days are over, he plans on attending Stanford Law School. What an impressive young man he is.
And the Florida coaches will tell you the best route runner as a football player. Student of the game. Now the shotgun Smith rolling right. Finds Robisky. Who's shoved to the ground, and that's an incomplete pass. Robisky dropped it. I'm a little surprised by this series. Ohio State had success handing the ball off, moving the ball. Really, Florida hasn't stopped them in their I formation run, run game, and they went away from it. I thought they'd come right back to it. Look at the coverage by number 30, Earl Everett, right in the zone with Brian Robisky, and the big hit jars the ball loose. Now it's third and long for the Buckeyes. Ohio State one of three on third downs thus far tonight. Receiver set for the Buckeyes. And they have to dart up through there if he gets pressure. The ball appeared to be tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it sails incomplete. So after an Ohio State defensive stop, Florida forces a three and out. Watch coming from the right side, number 94, Jarvis Moss, the hero of the South Carolina game. With two block kicks, it helped, it helped Florida win the game, put the pressure on Troy Smith. Ohio State showed blitz. Showed blitz and bailed out of it. Got an offensive line, a, the blocking scheme went away from it, and turned Moss loose. Yeah, everyone moving to the right side, opened up the left side for number 94, Jarvis Moss, and he took full advantage of it. Moss, a low line drive kick. Fielded by James, who spins away from one tackle. And it's wrapped up a great field position again for Florida. Starting this drive from their own 42, 44 yard punt, seven yard return by James. Nine oh four to play until halftime. Four-year starter Chris Leak to the Florida Gators. A seven-point lead over number one Ohio State. Had it off the win. Slips it to the outside. Still on his feet. Five-yard carry. We brought up earlier Deshaun Wynn. An outstanding running back in the Cincinnati area at Reading High School. Jim Tressel came down to watch him twice in person. The 10 best players in the state of Ohio that year, Dressel got all of them except for Deshaun Wynn. That's because Maurice Claret signed that year. And Deshaun Wynn wanted to be somewhere else. Looks like we might have, do we have two quarterbacks on the field yes. now? Yep. Lee come to center, and Tebow in the backfield. And now Lee will split left, and Tebow will run. Picks up a couple. Tripped up by Quinn Pitcock. A gain of four, it brings up third and two. It's interesting you brought up that recruiting class. Who was the last guy they signed? The last guy they, guy they took that year? Troy Smith. Troy Smith was the last one they took. Claret the first. So, so much for recruiting rankings and services <laughs> at times, right? Urban Meyer, in fact, recruited Troy Smith to play at Bowling Green when he was a head coach there before leaving to Utah. Two years there, and now his second year at Florida. Just three down linemen in again. They've done that the whole series, has Ohio State. Leak rolls. Still looking. Throws. Catch is good for a first down to his tight end, Cornelius Ingram, to the Ohio State 45. How about that young man? Coming into this game, his last four ball games, he had 16 catches. Entering the South Carolina game, which was late in the year for them, yeah, he'd only had one catch on the season. Yep. So he has really, truly emerged, and he's a guy who's really bought in to the Urban Meyer way because he quit last year. One year ago. He was done. One year ago. He was he finished. Some guys talked him out of it, and now he's coming along, and they think he's going to be really special. They told us he'd be in the game plan today. Showing blitz. Harvin inside the 40, down to the 37 yard line, and his play calling. Clearly keeping the Buckeye defense off balance. You know what's also happening? 
is we talk about missing tackles in the open field. I haven't seen that much of that with Ohio State, but what I have seen as we look at the numbers there in rushing yards and passing yards, what I have seen is that there's enough space when they catch the ball that they still have an opportunity to make one quick move and still get up the field and gain additional that's yardage. About a, that's about a 4-3 athlete in space with Laurinaitis, a linebacker. No one's close enough to immediately put him down. Harvin is time in motion, and they're going to get the ball in his hands once again. Plenty of daylight for Percy Harvin. And the freshman from Virginia Beach, Virginia, brings it down to the 20-yard line. We've talked about the three-man rush, but Ohio State's also playing with three linebackers. Watch to the right. Watch the blocks downfield. There and there and up here by the receivers. That's going to clear some space for Percy Harvin to get upfield and gain additional yardage. Charles, look, the five, six, and seven. Oh, did we talk but, about those numbers? But I'm, <laughs> look at how they blocked. They're not just catching the ball. They're out there covering up defenders. And they're not big guys, but they will stick their heads right into the numbers of the defenders. Well, they fake the handoff to him. And a dangerous throw by Lee. He had an eye on his fullback let's go, but almost here to get it was Vernon Golston. Coach, let me ask you, if you're Ohio State, it's hard to find a lot of good so far in this first half, but you're only down seven. What are you thinking right now if you're that man? Uh, I know right now. Haycock, Jim Haycock is a conservative call, play caller. But he will heat it up and play press, play man to man and blitz you from the 20 yard line in. But he's been very conservative. Incompleted pass again in Nile Harvin and right there was Malcolm Jennings. So a third and ten upcoming for the Gators at the Ohio State 21. Coach, that looked like a zone blitz because Vernon Golston, number 50, who's their guy that they use to move around and try and create mismatches, lined up, up down with, with his hand down, and then dropped back into the middle in the coverage. He wasn't a factor because the pass went to the outside, but it was a different look for Ohio State. I, I, you could see something of that, that, that nature again, just to make the ball come out a little quicker. Change the timing. Make, don't allow Leak to sit there and have a good look at your secondary. Harvin in motion, and that's a penalty. Early movement along the Gator offensive line. Ball start on the offense, number seven. Five yard penalty. So now you go from third and 10 to third and 15 and let's not forget the field goal kicker for right. the Gators. It's exactly what I was thinking Tom. Chris exactly. Hedley in what is shaping up to be a wild game here tonight and we'll see if it plays out that way. But field goal kicking so critically important and it has been a horrific year for Chris Hedley. And it's, and it's incumbent upon the Ohio State defense to put Florida in that situation and make them attempt a field goal at this, at this time. Get to the 11 for a first down. Luke steps up with an eye on the end zone and just throws it away. Good so, coverage. Good zone coverage. Everyone covered up. But I would have liked to have seen Chris Lee dart on that play. He had a he had a gap. Move to his left. I would have liked to have seen him try and take it upfield and at least gain some additional yardage for your field goal kicker. Now Chris Hedlund this season we mentioned has made four of 13. Last year he was a second. Team, team all SEC performer when he hit on 13 out of 16. This is a 43 yard attempt, his longest year, 33. And he hammers it right down the middle. How low is that? Is that big for his confidence? Huge for his confidence. He had been one for 10 outside of 30 yards this year prior to that kick. That's huge for Urban Meyer because it changes your mindset on offense. They got to feel good for that kid. Huh? Well, this oh, tough absolutely. year. He's giving him a 10 point lead. Our dramatic overhead shots of tonight's Tostitos National Championship game provided by the DLP Ultimate Fixture Cam. DLP is the official HD TV of the BCS on Fox. DLP, it's amazing. It's the mirrors. What a fabulous shot that is <laughs> to watch football. Wow. Can I get one of those at the house? Any possibility of that? The well, way you've been working things this week, it's probably a real good chance. <laughs> I would not operate that bad boy, though, would I? <laughs> 
Hammered out of the end zone by Ehas. And celebration on that Florida sideline, and why not? <laughs> Everybody rooting for Chris Hetlin. Especially the head coach, don't you think? Because now he doesn't have to always think about four down territory because he has an erratic kicker. He's got some confidence now in his kicker, and his kicker has confidence Look in himself. That. There was as much a sigh of relief from that sideline as there was from Hetland. Didn't they make waiting to exhale in the state of Arizona? <laughs> That's exactly what happened there for the Florida bench. Well, Troy Smith, who's had an extremely quiet first half, starts this drive with under six minutes to go. His team down by ten. They hand it off to the true freshman, Chris Wells, and he picks up two. You know what my surprise has been early in this game, guys? Is that Ohio State has not gone with their four-receiver look and run the ball inside very often. That's about they've been very successful most of the year. Spread people out, create your running lanes up front, and hand it off inside. I haven't seen much of that. But most of the year, Charles, they played with Ted Ginn Jr. How does that change things for Ohio State? Uh, well, it, change, it changes it because now who's your push guy downfield yep. to create the open lanes? Anthony Gonzalez could be that guy. Remember, he's a 4-3 guy, but he's learned to be more of a possession guy because Ted Ginn's provided the speed. Second down and eight. They run the option and the pitch to Wells, and he's close to a first down. Appears to be a yard short. Tackle made by Brandon Siler. Jim Tressel told me during their practices after the season he thought Chris Wells improved greatly just the, just understanding things a little better having a little time away as a true freshman we, when he came back he said he was a different player sometimes getting away from it clears your head and gives you a better look at things as we look at Florida with 209 total yards already in the first half. Sure Smith got no movement, no push up front at all. Florida won that battle across the front. And then a big one. Yeah, they're short. Ohio State on third and a yard cannot convert. And Jim's thinking about it. He's thinking about it, but I don't think he's going to do it. That's not really his nature. I'm wow. surprised. He's, he's going for it. Does he really think he needs to jumpstart the team that much? I guess so. Maybe he might try, to, might try to draw him off, guys. Might try to draw him off. They're going to run a play. And did he get enough? That extra lunge by Wells wasn't enough. If not, Florida's going to get the ball back. They are denied by the Gator defense. Joe Cohen is down injured on the field for the Gators. Look inside. Watch the defensive lineman. They push the, the offensive line back into the play. Number 93, Stephen Cohen. Ray McDonald. Ray McDonald with penetration. Stephen Harris. Look at that. Stephen Harris, 93, pushing him back into the play. And then the linebackers clean up. What that, a terrific job at the coach. You talked about him before as we see Joe Cohen down and getting some attention. But you talked about him all during our preparation, how impressed you were with the defensive front of Florida. Well, Greg Madison has done a tremendous job with this group. He rotates six. He has the philosophy. We're going to play 100 miles an hour. When you're tired, we'll get someone else in there. When you're when you're when you're fresh, we'll put you back in. But Maddie has them playing hard. You see these guys were coming off the ball. They start they set the tempo for the game initially with their pass rush. Now two big plays in a row in short yardage runs. And certainly many will ask Coach Trussell about this decision to go on fourth down at your own 29 yard line with three and a half minutes to play until halftime and the Gators already with a 10 point lead. Look how they just take the front wall and push them back and over the top McDonald first before Siler and the other guys get involved joiner number 19 to me I get the sense that there's a little bit of desperation from Jim Tressel he's trying to wake his team up and he went for it there and that one really did not pay off. Look at that penetration by all the blue shirts they're in the backfield of Ohio State I attack right here if it's me and Urban Meyer if I'm Urban Meyer I'm attacking right now. 
Got a shotgun. Rock starts. Fakes the throw. And then just slides down to the 29 yard line. What I've been most impressed about Florida's defense is how physical they've been. Everybody talks about their speed. Greg Madison says we're physical too. Harvin will take the snap from center on a shotgun. Fakes one way, cuts it back the other. And he's down to the 23 yard line. It'll bring up third down and three for the Gators. Clock rolling close to 2.30 to play until halftime. Well, you can't feel any better than the Gators feel so far tonight on defense. Look at some of these numbers. Astounding. 69 total yards given up already against one of the most high powered offenses in the, in the country. Deshaun Wynn all the way to the top of your screen. Empty backfield on third and four. Play clock nearly expired, and Lee has to call a timeout, stopping the game clock at 2.03. State defense right now. It's a big stop. If they could come out of this after not making that fourth down call, come out of here with a field goal. A field would goal huge. would be huge. And for Florida, it'd be a huge disappointment after that big defensive stand and not converting that into six points. It's all up to the Ohio State defense now. So fourth down. Does Urban Meyer change his thinking and go here on fourth down? We call it fourth and four. I go ahead no. and kick the ball. The kid has already made one. If he's got his confidence up, now's the time to go ahead and give him a shot. You're already up ten. If he would have missed that last field goal, he's going for he's it. He's probably going for it. No problem. He's going for it. <laughs> he's going to give him one chance early. And if he didn't like what he saw, he was changing his thinking. Atlanta, a season best 42 yarder a moment ago. This one from 40 on the nose. Good snap, good hold, and a great kick again by Hetland. How about that? So Hetland has half the number of field goals in his BCS National Championship game tonight through two quarters. A little better than two minutes. Than he had all year long. <laughs> you know, Urban said he, it's it's not like he's shanking the ball. He's hitting the ball well. It's just not going through. Yeah, he said he was just missing by you know just missing just by a little bit. He said it's like a golfer. If you're stinging the ball, that's one thing. As you know, I, I can live with that because I know we can work that out. But if you're shanking it and, and hooking it and, and doing all that, that wasn't so good. But Chris Hetland has been stinging the ball. Thus, he kept giving him opportunities. And tonight, two for two and giving his and giving his team a real lift. Ohio State has all three timeouts remaining. A minute 53 on the clock. And the Buckeyes are still without. Their number one threat on offense, Ted Ginn Jr. You know, if you go back before this game started as the kickoff begins, I'll try to finish it after this kickoff. Maurice Wells will take a knee. And Ohio State will start to drive from the 20. You know, as I was saying, guys, before this game started, how much did we hear about strength versus speed? And was that a myth? And was that real? Was that right? Big Ten strength, SEC speed. Well, both teams wanted to prove the opposite. Ohio State wanted to tell the world, hey, we can run with anyone. Ted Ginn Jr.'s injury has hurt that a little bit. Florida wanted to tell everyone, we're as physical as anyone. Tonight, Florida's been more physical than Ohio State to this point. Third straight Ohio State possession to start from their own 20. And they're going to come out throwing. Now Smith is caught from behind. The ball is loose. Harvey has it. Florida ball. The five. Jarvis Moss stripped it, and Derek Harvey picked it up. 
Have these defensive ends been blocked yet? Look over here and over here. Here they come. Have they been blocked really well all night? I would say not really. Look at that. Jarvis Moss strips it. Derek Harvey picks it up. Florida is in business. And do you come with the hammer right now, Coach? Do you bring Tebow in and pound right at him? I say yes. He's in. I'm coming with the big guy and running right at him right now while they're a little unsettled. Florida still has one timeout left. Block under a minute 15. Tebow will run it up the gut. And he's down to the two yard line. The clock continues to run. As coach mentioned one timeout remaining. Plenty of time, though, with the position they're in. They don't have to go crazy in terms of their hurry up. They want to move it, but they still have time. We you think, coach? Right back at him. Do it again, and then you. Then you've got your timeout to burn to get a good look on third down. What a night Derek Harvey's having, huh? What a night the Gators are having. Trying to add in this 13 point lead. And no. Down to the run. That'll bring up third and goal for the Gators. Clock under 30. One timeout left, and they will spend it now. As I watch Tim Tebow, I'm reminded of what a couple of SEC head coaches told me prior to this game. Without Deshaun Wynn in the ball game, and you know when he's been dinged so much this year, Tim Tebow is their only north-south runner. Our spectacular aerial coverage of tonight's Tostitos National Championship game is brought to you by Budweiser Select. And what an opening half it has been for the Florida Gators. Once beaten by Auburn in the Southeastern Conference, went on to defeat Arkansas in the SEC Championship game. Ohio State undefeated. Key victories this year at Texas and the season finale over Michigan. But Troy Smith and the Buckeyes are down by 13. And they're hoping that's where it will stay when we reach the intermission. It would appear that Ohio State had weathered the storm to a good extent by only giving up a field goal. Then they turned right back around and now can be an extra touchdown tacked on after Jim Trussell's decision to go for it on fourth down deep in his own territory. Critical stop again. If they can stop them right here, you're probably going to get a field goal unless they call two times. They may have called two plays in the huddle. Coach, he has one pass option available to him with Tebow. Tebow. There it yeah, is. Touchdown, it. throw to Andre Coleman. Per game this season. After the point after attempt by Headland, the Gators are about to fire up a 34 spot on the Buckeyes. And that's what it is. Now, honestly, anybody watching out there, even the most hardcore Gator fans, did you see this coming? Not, not to this extent. The, the consensus and the run pass option pays off with the touchdown to Caldwell. Able to get outside. He really had a couple of targets. Had Cornelius number six in the back of the end zone. Also available. Why was it so open? Because of the running ability of Tim Tebow. All he's done is run the ball straight ahead tonight. This time two jab steps forward and then flattens out and throws it out. Throws it out to the wing for a touchdown. Malcolm Jenkins number two. Jamario O'Neal talking about what the coverage was supposed to have been. No one had the receiver on that play. It's been confusion all night for the Buckeyes on defense. Florida has scored on six of its seven possessions. I mean, you're talking about a Gator team that averages 28 points a game. They have six more than that right now. Tom, as you mentioned, the consensus coming in was that if this game came down to Florida would win a tight one, Ohio State would win one with this type of a score. Many people question whether Florida could score enough points to win this game based on the offense we've seen all year. This is Hall to bring it back across the 29 to the 30. You know what's interesting to me right now is that Jim Trestle went for it on fourth and short in his own territory. 
here he might just take a knee and just get the heck out of here and end the half. Real juxtaposition going from gambling to being conservative if he does that. Yep, they're just going to hand it off to Antonio Pittman. He'll pick up 10 and that will be the final play in what has been. Wait a minute now, wait a minute. We have a flag on the field. And the officials telling everybody not so fast. Reggie Lewis, the Florida defensive back, indicating that the penalty should go against Ohio State, but that's normal, isn't it? Everyone points the finger at the other guy. <laughs> it's never me. <laughs> Personal foul on the defense, number 22. Penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. See, and he was locked up with Brian Rabisky, blocking on the perimeter. Reggie Lewis was telling his coaches, kind of like, he got me first. Well, that doesn't matter much. They caught him for the penalty. And Ohio State's going to call a timeout. The ball is being placed at the floor to 45. Do you just throw a Hail yeah. Mary here? Now you take a shot. That 15 yards allows you to, to get one, just throw it down the field, a Hail Mary, possible interference. And this is why guys such as yourself, coach, go bonkers when those types of penalties occur. Foolish Half penalties. should have been over. Should have been over. Should have been in the locker room right now. Now they get another shot. You throw it up. You get a defensive penalty. His play stays alive. Or they get a tip and they get some momentum going in. Well, you give them a chance when you should be in the locker room. Florida with five defenders inside the 10 yard line. Smith going to step up and let it fly to the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. And what a first half for the number two Florida Gators. Their only national championship was under Steve Spurrier in 1996. And with 30 minutes to go in this one, they have a 20-point lead. Let's go downstairs to Chris Meyer. Urban Meyer on his way to the locker room. Uh, wow, what do you think? Uh, we got 30 minutes of uh, football left against a great football team with a lot of speed, so we're going to have to keep that ball in front of us in the second half. I know, Urban, you script offensive plays. Could you have scripted any better your defense? Our defense. Our, our defense played well all year, and uh, they, it's a lot of football left, so we got to remember who we're playing here. Have you confused the Buckeye defense with your offense? No, I don't think so. I think we just have some good playmakers making some plays, and we're, we're I think we, we have some very fine athletes that are making some pre, uh, plays on the perimeter right now. All right, enjoy the second half. Thanks, Coach. All right, they get the ball first time of the second half. Urban Meyer, born in Ohio, grew up in Ohio, played at Cincinnati, got his degree, master's degree from Ohio State. His Florida Gators lead his once beloved Buckeyes 34-14 at halftime. We're set to begin the second half at the University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. 34-14, number two Florida leads number one Ohio State. The Gators scored on six of their seven first half possessions and will get the football to begin the second half of play. James steps out of the back of the end zone and the Gators will get it at the 20. The 48 points scored in the first half tonight tied for the most in a BCS national championship game. USC and Oklahoma scored 48 back in the 2005 FedEx Orange Bowl. The numbers clearly in Florida's favor. Look at that. Look at the turnovers. Two turnovers. 14 points off those turnovers for Florida. That's our Tostitos first half statistics. 71 total yards in the first half for Ohio State's offense. But right now their defense has to set a tone to help bring them bring their team back into the game. The defense can't just sit in zone coverage. They're going to have to take some chances this half. And Malik out of the shotgun, fumbles a snap, recovers in time to throw it away. Wisely done by the four-year starter and quarterback, Chris Leak. Let's send it downstairs and check in with Chris Myers. Tom, uh, Jim Trestle has said that he can't count on Ted Ginn Jr. in the second half. Right now, his X-ray is being, uh, his ankle, I should say, is being X-rayed, so the Buckeyes are not counting on him. Trestle said the fourth down gamble, he said that wasn't so bad because our defense did a good job of holding him, but I had to show some confidence in this team. Trestle said we can come back, even though we haven't faced this kind of deficit before. He was confident and cordial. Chris Myers, thank you very much. Second and ten for the game. Be a penalty. Again, 
That's Chris Leak, I believe. False start. Number 21 on the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. They got Deshaun Wynn. Kind of had their choice, didn't they? You know, it was interesting. As we. <laughs> look, at the, look at these look numbers, that. coach. Who would have thought Troy Smith, two of eight? An interception on 24 yards in the first half. Chris Leak outplaying the Heisman Trophy winner thus far. Well, they haven't been able to. They haven't been able to run their offense. They've completed a couple of passes. They really haven't established a running game. They haven't been able to get into any groove. But we'll find out what they're made of. There's a lot of football left to be played. Left. With a delay to win, he spins his way close to the 20. It'll bring up third down and 11 for the Florida Gators on this opening possession of the second half. You know, it was interesting as we watched free during we saw the snap to the quarterback on the ground four or five times. As we watched films throughout the season we saw the same thing. Yet Florida came out and played flawless. Now here you go you, you saw, saw it on the ground. Let's see if they can keep their intensity. The defensive line for Ohio State has to get to leak. We have not called Quinn Pickcock's name much tonight. The All-American defensive tackle. Leak steps up under heavy pressure, gets the pass completed, and an open field stop made by Marcus Freeman on Jamel Cornelius, so it's three and done for the Gators to begin the second half offensively. And that was a huge tackle for a variety of reasons. Number one, it's a terrific play by Marcus Freeman, just how you draw it up. But number two, open field in space, one of the few times the Florida Gators have not made the first guy miss. Well, the few, that's, that's the first time we've seen him drop him right there right on the with spot. no extra yardage. A lot of movement in this punt formation for Florida. And then toward the sideline, the punt by Wilbur. And a terrible kick. You gotta wonder why you're getting cute. You have a 20 point lead, and you're asking your punter to do something so which is out, completely out unnatural. Kick. It was a rugby kick, and he's been kicking well. A 20-yard punt by one of the nation's best punters. What, it, what happened here, I think, is that Coach Meyer was trying to get a little something extra that maybe they just didn't need. Eric Wilber's been a terrific punter from regular formation. And this first and second half has started out exactly as Ohio State needed. A stop on defense, great field position to start on offense. In the eye formation, Stan White, Jr., in front of Antonio Pittman, they give it to Pittman on first down. And he is dropped behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of four by Brian Crum and Brandon Seiler. Seven possessions in the opening half for an offense that averages nearly 40 points per game and over 400 yards of offense, and not much there. Look at that, guys. 64 yards, the longest drive they had resulted in a touchdown, but you're looking at minus three, minus six, nine yards, zero. This is very uncharacteristic of Ohio State offense. This all starts with that defensive front. And we already saw the first play, the push the defensive line is getting on the offensive line of Ohio State. And they're showing blitz on second down and long. Green. They fake the screen. Smith steps out of trouble and will keep it himself. Crossing midfield to the 47-yard line. It'll bring up third down and 11 for the Buckeyes. Florida showing blitz and creating some problems with, with pass protection. They're bailing out of there back to zone, but you see a lot of communication up front. They're trying to get one-on-one -on -one with those defensive ends. They want the tackles to have to block the defensive ends man-on-man. -man. Third and 12. Blitz coming. Smith looking for help. None there. And down he goes. In the arms of Earl Everett, who lost his helmet chasing Troy Smith. Helmet? I don't need no stinking helmet, says Earl Everett. Earl, Earl says this game's too important. This is all out. Brandon Siler flushes him, coach, and then look at the backside pursuit. Let's give Florida credit. Uh, look at this effort. Is that something? Can we talk about how important this game is? See how Moss spilled it? By miss, even though he missed the tackle, he spilled it right to Earl Everett. 
Look at their look at the bench react to that. But let's give let's give that Florida defense credit. They they show zone. They blitz. They blitz one more guy than, than Ohio State can block. Well, three and out for Ohio State, and now Trapasso angling toward the sideline. And a fair catch called for and made cleanly by James at the nine. 38-yard punt. Gators get it for the second time in the second half. Aerial coverage of tonight's Tostitos National Championship game is brought to you by Budweiser Select. A gorgeous night in the Valley of the Sun. Glendale, Arizona, they're working on Earl Everett. He made the tackle a moment ago on Troy Smith without his helmet. Make the tackle without a helmet. They got to give you a little extra attention, don't they? First down for Florida. And they hand it off to Harvin. And he picks up two. Guys, one of the stories I'm seeing in this ball game is the Florida offensive line. Coming into the game, we talked to a number of people this week. We all talked to them independently, off the record, all that good stuff. And what did they tell us? That's a problem spot for Florida, a weak link. This is a group of guys who have played all year long together, came into the season with 17 combined starts coming into this year. They've come together, been average most of the year, but tonight they've been dynamite. Motion, he takes a screen and slips his way through a pair of Buckeye defenders and brings it out to the 17 yard line. Laurinaitis on the tackle. Coach, when you don't have a good offensive line, how do you help them out? You get the ball out of your hands, let the quarterback get it out. You come on touch, but the ball's out, it's released quickly. And from, and from a shotgun position and a couple more steps, you're seven, eight yards deep. That's a long way to go for the lineman to get to the quarterback. Yeah, you've got your jitterbug out in space. That's Phil Trotwine, Jim Tart, Steve Rissler, Drew Miller, and Carlton Menner up front for the Gators. Third down and two. Play fake to win. Safe throw. Catch by Latsko. They'll move the chains up to the 22. Isn't he a great story? You touched on him earlier, Tom. Billy Latsko. Grandfather played at the University of Florida, played quarterback. His father played at the University of Florida. Billy Latsko was a walk-on, born to be a Gator. Mom's a graduate of Florida. Construction management major, helped build some, built, built some buildings in the offseason. What he did was he worked full-time and then went and worked out to get ready for the year. Yep. That's the kind of kid you want in your ball club. You're seeing a lot of short passes. We talked about the lack of running game, but that short passing game, Supplements. It is the running game. It supplements the running game. It's the same thing. It's a high percentage pass, easy throw. Option, I believe, pitches to win. Tries to cut it back the other way. It's surrounded by the Buckeye defense. Well, you take a peek on that Ohio State sideline. What a shame. Oh, Ted Ginn Jr. Now aided by crutches after the injury early in the game. For those of you that weren't with us, again return the opening kickoff of this national championship. 93 yards for a touchdown. He was injured on Ohio State's first offensive possession. Has not returned, and it appears he will not return. Big, big blow, not just to him, but to the offense overall for Ohio State. Well, they look lost without it. Inside handoff to Caldwell and Pitcock ran him down after being chased by Jay Richardson. Third down and 12. Leak under pressure and down he goes in the arms of Vernon Golston. So seen, now the Gators will punt from their own five. See, you've seen the, the Ohio State defense has responded this half. Look I'm back. sure some coaches had some had some things to say at half, but I'll tell you, they've responded. That's that's two times, three and out. And what was so good about that was it was the coverage downfield that allowed Vernon Golston, number 50, and Jay Richardson, number 99, to finally get to Chris Leak. Nowhere to go with the football, allowed the pressure to get to him. Wilbur puts a leg into this one, sending Gonzalez all the way back to his own 32. Tiptoes along the sideline and steps out of bounds at the 43. And a late flag comes in. I'm not sure where this is coming from. Right along the sideline on the Florida side.
Jack Folliard, our referee tonight, this Pac-10 officiating crew working the national championship game. Urban Meyer doesn't look very happy. The coach is worried about field position, both of them. This is going to be a big one. Member of the kicking team went out of bounds on his own, came back in. That's a foul against the ticking team, five yards previous spot. We're going to determine whether that foul will be accepted or not. But fortunately, he didn't come back in and actually make a play. I think they'll take the ball right there. Now, Read the lips of Urban Meyer. Yeah. He's telling them that's a bad call. And what, he's, what they're saying by the penalty, <laughs> yeah, it's a bad call in emphatic language. Is declined. He called it first coach. down. Well, he, Urban's trying to get the officials' attention. This, sure. is, this he's got a whole half yet. We have 6:18 to play in the third quarter. It's been all Gator D so far tonight. Our Taco Bell impact players of the game. There's high impact Chris Leak and very low impact for anything offensively for Ohio State. Antonio Pittman. Troy Smith, Mr. Everything. Heisman Trophy winner. Only two of eight has been under heavy pressure, and that's Anthony Gonzalez for a three yard gain on first down. The game now has to go back on Troy Smith's shoulders. Now that doesn't seem like much of a statement. It has been before. But they're down 34-14 in the third quarter. He will probably throw more than run the ball. But the offensive line has got to protect him. Even on that pass, plenty of pressure in his face. The Florida offense, the Florida defensive line whipping the Ohio State offensive line this game. the pitch to Antonio Pittman and he steps out of bounds good enough for an Ohio State first down to the Florida 41. Let's check in once again downstairs with Chris Myers. Tom senior linebacker Earl Everett who's being used somewhat as a spy on Troy Smith. He's the one who made the tackle without the helmet. He has a bloody nose and a cut uh, but as the trainer said uh, that's the reason we wear helmets. He is back in the game playing for the Gator defense. So that's the reason. How about this guy, what, what he's been through? Suffered from silent seizures as a kid and has overcome that to become the productive player he is today. Empty backfield. Smith looking around, and a penalty flag comes in. Right around the line of scrimmage. Will this be holding against Ohio State? That was a dangerous throw. Threw off the back of his foot. Guys, yeah. I think a lot of people at home, we're going to hear the, the official word, and then I want to ask you, Coach Alvarez. Holding on the offense, number 71. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. Coach, I think a lot of people at home are saying, how in the world does this Ohio State offense look this bad tonight? Is all the credit the Florida defense, or are they just also having a bad night? Well, the Florida defense, first of all, has made a lot of people look bad this year. They've only given up 13, 13 and a half points a game. I think that they're a little sluggish, but you tack on, you have to give the Florida defense all the credit. And they really are suffering Ohio State without Ted Ginn. Seems like they've lost a little spark without him in the game, too. Smith fires to the far side, and the catch is made by Gonzalez. He'll be two yards shy of a first down. Second and two, clock rolling down to five minutes in the third quarter. Watch how else you chip away at timing. Watch there, just redirect wide receiver, throw him out there a little bit. Makes it a tougher catch down, down, up, down field. You try and get the little jam, take away the timing between quarterback and receiver. Haven't been able to call Anthony Gonzalez's name very much either. Take a look at the leading tacklers. Guys dividing up. The spoils of victory thus far for Florida. Showing pressure again. Second and 12. Broken up beautifully. By Ryan Smith, who played for Urban Meyer at the University of Utah, and a new rule put in by the NCAA where if a player graduates in three years academically, they can transfer and not sit out a year. 
that has now been rescinded already. <laughs> One year. One year and out. took advantage and of it. remember, Urban Meyer was totally against that rule when it was passed. And his athletic director said, hold it a sec. Jeremy Foy said, you got a chance to get a pretty good player. You sure you're against it? For this year, he's all for it. Well, Ohio State's getting in the neighborhood now where they have got to score on this drive. Watch the push up inside. Here they come after Smith. Throws nowhere close to Anthony Gonzalez. If you're Jim Trestle, fourth and 12, are you going here in the third quarter down 20? I think they're going to play field position here, put the ball away, and give their defense another chance. They've had two stops. They want to give their offense the best opportunity. Fourth and 12 here with a confused group. I kick the ball away. Florida has shown pressure and come on that series, not making Troy Smith make a decision quickly. That ball has to come out of his hands because he has somebody running clean right to him. Under four and a half to play in the third quarter. Trapasso toward the far side. We'll see where they spot this. And they're saying the 20 yard line, 21 yard line. 419 to play in the third, and the Gators lead by 20. Our overhead shots of tonight's Tostitos National Championship game provided by the DLP Ultimate Picture Can. DLP is the official HD TV of the BCS on Fox. DLP, it's amazing, it's the mirrors. Guys, look at the D-line of Ohio State. They've got new guys in. Lawrence Wilson's in the game now. Well, I saw Todd Denlinger, number 92, trying to get some fresh legs. That's Alex Barrow, number 78. Leaked under center, will hand it off to Deshaun. Win his biggest carry of the day. And pulls his way to the 31. And that did not last long because coming on the field right now is, are the starters for Ohio State on defense. Well, that's what happens when you give up a 17-yard run. Watch the gash right here, coach, coming right at you. Look at 67 leading up in there, Jim. That's uh, uh, Drew Miller, number 67. Well, they got a lot of movement on the defensive line, Charles. That you wanted to give, want to see how long they could last. I might have been able to lift through there for three or four yards on that one. 17-yard run by Wynn, who had 16 rushing yards in the game, and now it's Tim Tebow, and he picks up three to the 35. You know, I go back to something Urban Meyer said, that he likes to bother defenses. And what he means by bother them, he says the best way to do that is through by running option, running empty sets, and running unbalanced sets. We've seen all three of those tonight from Florida, and to say that they bothered Ohio State is putting it mildly. They've been dominating the line. Line. Urban was a defensive coordinator. <laughs> and he's hung out with one. That you hate to see. But he, he does a lot of study with people. He got the right words. Motion. They're going to get him the football. Dancing around, looking for some daylight. He's out maybe for a pickup of one. Third down and coming. We're under three minutes in the third quarter. And the Florida Gators leading 34 to 14. Now we've seen that play from Florida a few times tonight because they like to the, what they call match up on offense. Get something to get the ball to a guy, a playmaker out in space who can dominate guys downfield. Well, we've seen that a number of times. I'm thinking the counter's coming before long. Fake quick screen, throw back to the other side. They have not thrown the ball down the field today. Everything's been controlled passing game. Find the creases, dunk the ball. Gators 8 of 13 on third down. This is third and six. Leap underneath, first down. Out to the 47 yard line. That's Jamel Cornelius. They're getting the set. They're getting the linebackers to vacate so much that you're finding the gap underneath. See the drops by the linebackers? They're out of there. Laurenitis number 33, Freeman number one. Those are really deep drops, coach, and that allows the, the guy underneath to catch the ball. Larry Grant, number six, looked the wrong way. He needed to look to the strength of the formation and locate the underneath receiver. He's looking to the wrong side of the formation. Lee pump fake one way, long ball the other way. Well, away from the intended receiver, Dallas Baker. He 
Something about the symmetry of these numbers that Florida has, five, six, seven, and eight, right? Look at the all-purpose yardage, a couple of touchdowns out of that group. I know right now, Dallas Baker saying, you know, I knew I should have worn number nine. Right. <laughs> that maybe I would have gotten to the, as, as part of this discussion, and he's had a nice night himself. You know, the last thing Urban said is, as we talked to him the other day, I want to put the ball in my playmaker's hands, and that's exactly what they've done today. Caldwell in motion, they'll give it to Win, And he picks up two, maybe three, another third down upcoming. Play clock expired, it appeared, before Lee got the snap. Timeout from the bench, the bench alertly called it. Florida, number one. I was taking a look at... We'll get back to that in a minute. Again. On a third and seven. Catch made by Harvin trying with a second effort to get the first down. He does get it. And there's a penalty flag in the backfield. Ran right by Larry Grant, number six, who actually backed out of the line to try and play that crossing route. Too quick for him and still got the ball in there. They showed a four-man pressure Drop and bailed him out. He was a spy looking for any under uh, any underneath routes, but he just couldn't run with him. That's a defensive lineman. <laughs> Warren Itis appears to be shaken up for Ohio State. Winner of the Bronco Nagurski Award. Different type of game for the Ohio State defense tonight. They've had to play it retreating instead of attacking as they have most of the year. Holding against the offense number 75. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. One thing I noticed on this last possession when Florida called the bench a timeout from the bench. The, hu the huddle was broken with 15 seconds. They're trying to shorten the game. They didn't want the ball snapped until it's under five seconds. They're going to shorten this fourth quarter. Trying to milk it. I, you know, you got to be careful with that because you shut down your offense if you do it too much. Gonzalez waiting for a fair catch. That ball batted back. And it will be down at the five. Nope, 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 nope. And the and far it, side it set it across the goal line. And in college football, once it just breaks that plane, See, he tips it's it a there. touchback. That's right. And because it had crossed the line, it, as you said, Tom, it broke the plane of the goal line. If it had been another league, <laughs> a Sunday league, might have had a chance to have that play. Because he was in the end zone, but he hadn't touched when he has feet hadn't touched when he tipped the ball. Block will start as Ohio State quickly gets to the line of scrimmage. Jim Tressel's Buckeyes down by 20 in the final seconds here of the third quarter. And they hand it to Antonio Pittman. No room to run to the 21. Wrapped up by Brandon Seiler. Florida's defensive line getting a terrific push inside over the guards of Ohio State. Steve Rearing, number 71, having a particularly difficult time with the defensive front of Florida. And that line cannot get up on the linebackers. They cannot combo and touch the linebackers, thus leaving those linebackers run free. Running free and clean and making hits right now as the quarter winding down. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. Smith under throws his intended receiver Anthony Gonzalez that'll bring up third down and nine for Ohio State as we're underway in the fourth quarter the coverage is just smothering right now I mean Troy Smith threw directly into coverage to me he was hoping something good would happen on that play there was nothing there Ryan Smith's coverage on Anthony Gonzalez he was he was right on his shirt it looks like Troy Smith is very frustrated right now he ran motion out of the backfield the defensive back came all the way across the field. There's no way he could cover him. Having come, come that far, he didn't look at him. The motion of guy at the backfield, it doesn't really hurt you. Moss coming, and he got it. The Buckeyes 
Bucks are one for eight on third down. Coach, you said first down would be critical. They're averaging second and eight plus tonight. They've answered the offensive line. The, the pass protection is confused. They're sliding the line away. He goes untouched. Coach, I've always been told an unblocked player should make big plays. Jarvis Moss's eyes must have just lit up <laughs> and said, are you kidding me? That was a sprint. You turned me loose like that? That is the fourth time Troy Smith has been sacked tonight. James from midfield. Brings it down to the 39. Jarvis Moss, the last two years overcoming a mysterious illness that jeopardized his career. He's making Troy Smith and the Buckeyes ill tonight. Florida Gators came in allowing only 13 and a half points per game and tonight have more than stood up against one of the most prolific offenses in all of college football Ohio State bear in mind one of the two Ohio State scores came on a kickoff return the opening kick in this BCS national championship game Leak to throw on first down and throws it away. Well, has he managed this game well? And how many times have we seen him make the proper decision? No one open, give it, throw the ball away, don't take the sack, live to fight another down. And he hasn't gotten greedy. No. He hasn't tried to take the ball down the field. He's been schooled. There's, zone, there's going to be a deep zone, drop. You're going to have seams. Work the seams, be patient. That's exactly what he's done. I only think of one really questionable throw that he's made all night. He's had a terrific evening. Talking about a young man who's gone through a pair of head coaching changes during his four years at Florida. Three different offensive systems, if you will. Leak breaks it to the outside and steps out of bounds. First down, Gators. His father, Curtis, a former NFL camp receiver, put Chris and his brother CJ, who was a quarterback in Tennessee, through pro-style workouts when Chris was five years old. When he originally committed to Florida, Steve Spurrier was still officially their head coach. Spurrier went on to the NFL. In came Ron Zook. Out he went. In came Urban Meyer. Many felt that Lee could not succeed in this style of offense. And here he is, 13 minutes and 40 seconds away from silencing so many that have ridden him so hard for four years at Florida. And there are a lot of them up there who will jump on his bandwagon tonight. Ball start on the offense, number five. Five yard penalty, first down. First down. You look at Leak's career, the Florida record holder. Look at passing that. Passing yards, 11,000. Most attempts, most completions. Only Danny Werfel threw and has thrown more touchdown passes at Florida than Chris Lee. And most of the records he broke are Danny Werfel's, which is part of the reason it's hard for people to embrace Chris Lee because Danny Wonderful won a national championship. This could change everyone's perception and thought processes about Chris Lee tonight if they manage to close this one out. Dangerous throw there, and a catch is made along the sideline by Cornelius Ingram. That seemed to float for a long time. Had no reaction from the secondary. Not at all. The ball was thrown across the field with nothing on it. You saw no defender react to it. He was so open that he could get away with this when it allowed Cornelius Ingram to actually adjust and turn back inside to catch the ball. It was meant to be thrown to the outside. But as you mentioned, Coach, no one there to react. Thus, a completion. It's interesting. Normally in this situation, you run the clock you run by running the football. They're throwing the ball. Not now with Not Tebow. With Tebow. And that's a first down and then some. Tebow down to the seventh. He just ran right through Laurinaitis. Earlier in the game, it was simply the ISO. This is almost a counter. Watch how Tim Tebow moves left and then comes back right. Lats go folds around number 42, leading and right up into the hole. Look at how they figured it out. Troutwine 75 up front. Lats go with the big block. Baker 81 trying to get something done downfield. 
Tebow again as Florida's leading rusher in the game. He's still in there and he's going to carry it again. And he is met head on by Marcus Freeman at the five. Well, we're under 12 and a half. And time, oh, beginning to wind down on the undefeated Ohio State Buckeyes. You don't have any, you don't have many possessions left. Somehow that ball has to come out. Yeah. You've got to be trying to strip the ball, get the football out of there. You can't, you can't get a moral victory and make them kick a field goal no. here and have it count. They've got, as you said, Coach, they've got to force a turnover. I'm trying to strip it from Tebow is like trying to strip it from King Kong. <laughs> And look, both quarterbacks in. Tebow lined up at the tailback position. That's him right there. And now Leak will run off. Remember, he can't put his hands under center. Ball start. Move. Number 84 in the offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. You know, for many of you wondering about that have not watched the Gators play this season, the whole Chris Leak story, which we've documented. Bear in mind, when Tebow signed as heavily the recruited quarterback as there was in all of high school football across the country last yes. year, you're talking about a young man who owns Florida high school records for total offense, career passing yards, and touchdowns, either throwing or running, 159 of them. Just about everyone in Gainesville wanted Tebow as the man from day one. They'll get plenty of them next year. Harvin oh. down to the two. And just to finish that thought, all of us in unison on agreement with this. The Florida Gators are not playing in the championship game tonight, taking nothing away from Tebow. But if he's their every down quarterback rather than Lee, they're not here tonight. That, that's exactly right. And I'm telling you, it takes a special coach to communicate, and you need a, a, a person like Leak to accept that, but it was an explanation both of you are going to play. Gators going to spend a timeout, 11 minutes to play in Arizona, and a lot of tears in Ohio. Third down and goal for the Gators. Stack die formation, it's win, and he will be denied a touchdown. We'll see if they send out Hetland for a field goal or no, they're no. going to go for it on fourth no, no. and goal at the one. You put the game away. You can put the game away, and if you don't make it, they've got to go, go 99, 99 yards. I think it's an excellent, excellent decision by Urban Meyer, and they brought the hammer back in at quarterback Tim Tebow. Favorite play's been the isolation. Tebow straight ahead. And put this one on ice. Penalty. Things getting a little chippy in there, guys. A little frustration coming out, I'm sure. Not sure there was a flag, maybe an inadvertent flag. A lot, there's a lot of talk after the play, though. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Well, now Florida's a man short. Sprinting out there is a big fella, Ronnie Wilson. He was in on the last play. He got so excited by the touchdown, he ran off the field. He really forgot he had to be in on the extra point. And when Ronnie Wilson runs on the field, as that one is deflected, but it's still good, and that's the kind of game it's been for the Gators. It's a big night for the Gators. Tebow to the end zone. 41-14. Florida. Florida's first and only national championship the season of 96 rolling over to January in the Sugar Bowl of 97 against Florida State. Danny Warfold and Ike Killiard got it rolling and it never stopped for Steve Spurrier's Gators. 52 points, nearly 500 yards of offense, domination in a 52-20 final. That was a rematch game. Florida State had beaten them in the regular season and everything broke well. Ohio State actually beat Arizona State in the Rose Bowl that year, which opened the way for Florida to win a national title. Play blown dead before it ever got started. 
False start on the offense, number 72. Five yard penalty, first down. If somebody would have told you the numbers would look like this for Ohio State tonight, you would have looked at whoever said that to you and <laughs> said you need to check in and get a straight check at ASAP. <laughs> This is an offense that hasn't been slowed down all year. What a job by this defense. Troy Smith has hit on this four of 13, 35 yards, been sacked four times. And that one falls incomplete. You know who's as happy as anyone right now watching this ball game? Probably not here because he's in season. Billy Donovan, head basketball coach of Florida. If Florida closes this one out, it will be the, be the first time in NCAA history you'll have the reigning NCAA basketball champions and football champions at the same time. And Billy pretty good Dobbin, year. Pretty, pretty good year. Billy Dobbin and Urban Meyer were neighbors back home in Florida. They worked together quite well closely, and Urban Meyer was at the NCAA championship game last year in the locker room after the game, absorbed the feeling, and wanted to experience it himself, and he just made tonight. Pressured, escapes it for the time being, and down it goes. Fifth time he's been sacked tonight. It was Harvey who will get credit for the sack, his third in the game. He made the contact, threw him, and Smith fell down. They've been relentless. They haven't slowed down all night. He really has had nowhere to go with the ball. That's the perfect word for it, Coach Relentless, because they didn't just run right to him on that play. They had to go around a few guys, traverse through a little bit of traffic, and still made the play the secondary once again, covering the receivers downfield. Nowhere for the Heisman Trophy winner to go with the football. Frustration indeed for Troy Smith. Notice handed off to Antonio Pittman. Out to the 15 yard line, and Ohio State will walk off the field offensively. Even though this has been such a disappointing night for Smith, you can't overlook his career and just the journey for Smith to get to this game. Grew up in the tough streets of Cleveland, separated from his mother, Tracy, for four years while she battled her own personal demons. He met three men who he calls his personal angels. The first two, a midget football coach named Erwin White, his high school football coach, Ted Ginn Sr., who restored his self-esteem, and then Jim Tressel, who taught him how to become a man. And that he has been for Ohio State, the man. But tonight, it's a night to celebrate Florida. Well, they are hooting and hollering if you're wearing blue and orange tonight. And in large part because Evan Smith was leading the Gator shot. <laughs> I have a question, guys. Are the Gators just going to win everything this year? Football, basketball, dancing with the stars? <laughs> I mean, they're leaving no titles out there for anyone, are they? Oh, boy. Troy Smith, you know, you almost wonder, obviously, as you said, Tom, you can't wipe out the career. If this stays the way it will, say it stays the way it is right now, this will only be the second loss he's ever suffered against a top 10 team. He came into the game 10 and 1 as a starter against top 10 opposition with his best ball games against those teams. Boy, and he's such a likable kid. The story is unbelievable because he could have gone south so easily. And the influence of the men you named and the other people in his life. And he's back reunited with his mother again yes. after a tough four years away from one another. She's doing well. They're very, very close. Yeah, she actually has given her the Heisman Trophy. Yep. Said she deserves it for what she's been through and how she's battled back. It's a terrific story. Just tonight, the story is not enough. You know, when you talk to anyone on that Ohio State football team about leadership, and Troy Smith is the guy they, that they bring up. They follow his lead. You know, his offensive coordinator, Jim Bowman, his quarterback coach, Joe Daniels, both had some medical issues in the last year. They both have credited Troy Smith with helping them recover because he'd show up every day with film and say, I know you can't do much, coach. Well, can we just watch this film? It's paid off with 12 wins this year. Third down and four. We're going to milk the clock, play clock. They hand it off to win, and they'll milk it some more. Win to the 38. That'll bring us.
Gators down to six minutes and in some. Let's check in with Chris Myers. Tom, the players on the Gator bench saying, I could feel it. I, I could taste it. You showed Danny Werfel and that championship team his words. He spoke as a senior are on the back of this card on the other side, the championship ring of that year. Urban Meyer gave this card out to all of the Florida Gators earlier this year when they suffered their only loss of the year against Auburn, emphasizing the point at that time that despite one loss, just like that year with Werfel when they lost to Florida State, you can win a championship if you stay together and play hard and that's what the Gators are about to do and as some of them said today they carry these cards in their pocket they'll have new cards to hand out to future games and win as we mentioned earlier the kid who walked away from the very heart of Ohio State football land growing up in Cincinnati will be able to go back to the Queen City after this school year is over and lay it on the Buckeye fans. And, and there's the unity chain as worn by Brandon Seiler. He created that. All the guys on defense have their names on dog tags on that unity chain. He unveiled it before the LSU game when they ran on the field this year and said, everybody, come together. Everyone be a part of the link of a great Florida defense. And now they're going to have a piece of, ch piece of championship link to add on to it. Down to the 25-yard line for Keiston Moore, his first carry tonight. Our aerial coverage of tonight's Tostitos National Championship game on Fox is brought to you by Budweiser Select. Well, this, this Ohio State defense has been on the field all, all night. Florida has had 36 minutes time of possession. And have run how many extra plays than Florida than, than Ohio State? And when you take a look at that, that's tra that has to translate into easily more than two to one in terms of offensive plays run. Florida just letting that play clock run all the way down just before it hit zero, before the snap of the football. I'll hand it to Moore, and he's inside the 20 to the 19. And we are under four and a half minutes to play in Glendale, Arizona. The Buckeyes, the most points they've allowed in a game since November of 99 against Illinois. Amazing. All the credit in the world goes to this Florida Gator coaching staff and the players executing on the field. You have two coaches who are big game coaches. Urban Meyer, eight and three against ranked teams. Jim Tressel's record against in bowl games against the Michigans of the world has been spectacular. Urban Meyer had, had this team ready to play. Oh yeah. Yes. Ben lost his footing. Since, since, since we're throwing out all the stats, you go on Vin, go Vince Scully here, right? Throughout the stats, Urban Meyer at all of his stops with more than a week to prepare. Coming into tonight, 20 and two. Now we'll be 21 and two. So when you talk about preparing a team, having a layoff, he understands it. How did he get this team ready? He divided it into three phases. And what he did was he ramped up to what he called game day. And then they take a day off since they didn't have a game to play. Come back, do it again. And then tonight was the third week of game day. And they actually played and played quite well, obviously. At what point does he bring Malik off to an ovation? I'm wondering if he's what thinking that. Let that kid go out let the Florida faithful really cheer for him. We're going to throw it to Harvin, and he's very close to another meter first down as the clock winds to three minutes exactly. And depending on the spot of the ball. If it's a first down here, I'd, I'd, I'd like to run Tim Tebow out and give Chris Lee the chance to come out and get an ovation. We talk so much about Urban Meyer, but I, I know I'm speaking for the both of you guys. After being around Jim Trestle and this program he has at Ohio State, this will be in his six years, the fourth time they finished in the top five. 62 and 13 is record, including a national championship. That's a first down. The Buckeyes will play in more national championship games under Jim Tresser. But this night belongs to a young man born and raised in the Buckeye State, Urban Meyer from Ashtabula, about a three hour ride outside of Columbus. <laughs> and Tom, I don't think it's. I don't think it's the only time we're going to see that guy competing for national championships either. 13 true freshmen contributed. To the 
14 yard line. We're under 2.30. And our All State good hands play of the game. This is all you need to know. How good was the Florida defense? They leave their helmets on the field and still caught Troy Smith tonight. Hey, football, rugby, whatever. <laughs> That showed the attitude of that football team. National title on the line. Let's go make plays. What an impressive, impressive night. No other way to put it. Every phase for Florida. Deshaun Wynn. Close to the 10 yard line. You know, we were talking about Troy Smith and his relationship with, with his mother. And how about for Reggie Nelson? Our DLP Ultimate Picture Camp tonight bringing you great shots. DLP is the official HD TV of the BCS on Fox DLP. It's amazing. It's the mirrors. You don't know whether or not Reggie Nelson will go on to play in the NFL next season. But Charles, his mother died four days before Christmas. Yes, the woman they called Miss Mary, Mary Lakes, former yes. school custodian, had breast cancer for three years. She passed away December 21. Yep. Reggie fortunately was able to get home. What a feeling. <laughs> as cold as that is, it feels so good. It feels good. so good. <laughs> And he doesn't mind flash dancing out of there, does he? Dude. <laughs> Gonna be a tough goodbye for Jim Trestle. With Troy Smith leaving after tonight. Already having earned his degree in communications. And this is going to do it. For the second time. In 100 years of football at the University of Florida, the Gators celebrate as national champions. Welcome you back to Glendale, Arizona for the direct TV post game show. Urban Meyer and the Florida Gators celebrating the school's second national championship. Let's send it downstairs to Chris Myers. Tom, I'm with uh, Reggie Nelson, number one on the Gator defense and the team number one. Congratulations. How was this defense able to stifle Ohio State's offense? Oh, man, they, they big up front. You know, the SEC is too fast for, you know, the Big Ten and stuff. So our front seven played awesome tonight. And, uh, all the credit goes to them, including all my picks that I got this year. They, they played good all year. So everybody in the front seven got all my credit. Uh, Troy Smith was without Ted Ginn much of the game. Uh, how did that affect what he wanted to do? Oh, man, I think with Ted Ginn, I, that, that changed up their game plan a lot, and that really hurt him. But that was the main key of the game coming in, uh, just trying to keep Ted Ginn under control and stuff, because with his speed, he should have been playing the SEC anyway. So, you know. We, we just had to come out and play ball. You were heavy underdogs. Urban Meyer, did he play that up this week? The, you know, the world against us kind of theme? Oh, man, he put that underneath our skin 24-7. It was the underdogs, and, and we just got tired of hearing about it, and we just had to come out and play football. I know your mom passed away three weeks ago. It was a tough week for you. You played on through it. You had to be thinking of her in this game. You dedicate this game and this championship to your mom. Oh, man, I, I thank my mom every every second that go by because, you know, that's something that a young man will never get over losing his mom. You only got one mom. So I just she, she looking down on me, and I just got to keep making her proud. You played with a lot of heart. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Reggie Nelson. Tom? Chris, thank you very much. Mr. Nelson, thank you very much. Chris Leak celebrating a championship. Troy Smith says goodbye to Ohio State. We roll on with our post game coverage in a moment. Welcome back to the DirecTV Satellite Television post game show. 
Time for the trophy presentation and the BCS National Championship trophy is sponsored by DirecTV. Chris Rose, take it away. All right, thank you very much. Also want to tell you who is joining us tonight on the podium from DirecTV, Ivan Lopez. Also the president and CEO of Frito-Lay, Al Carey. And here to present the 2007 BCS Coaches Trophy, the commissioner of the ACC, John Swafford. John, take it away. Chris, first of all, on behalf of the 11 conferences that make up the Bowl Championship Series, let me congratulate both the Ohio State University and the University of Florida for making this year's national championship game. And now, on behalf of the American Football Coaches Association, it's my pleasure to present the Coaches Trophy to Coach Urban Meyer and the University of Florida as national champions. a very special time for you guys a great way to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the University of For or football I'll tell you 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 work hard for a lot of reasons most importantly I want to thank Gator Nation for supporting us this whole year thank you Gator Nation I got to tell you it's pretty good and quick work on the wardrobe you've already got the national championship jacket busted out that's pretty good uh, Nike's been good to us so we got to be good to them and uh, I also like to thank our senior football our, we have 21 seniors in our team that played as hard as they can and senior class is the reason we're here today coach I know you guys listen I know your players heard the talk for the last month and they said you know what? why aren't you talking about Florida why shouldn't this outcome have been shocking tonight to the nation. Well, uh, I'd like to thank all those people because uh, our pregame speech, it was easy. For the last month, we've had all the quotes, all the, you know, I don't want to say lack of respect, but that's exactly what it was. And you're dealing with a bunch of young people that work hard, and that was the greatest motivation. We, for 30 days, our team got motivated, and that's why they played so hard. Coach, congratulations. It is time right now to present the Offensive MVP Award, and that's going to go to the guy who's holding that beautiful crystal football senior quarterback Chris Leak. Turn around here buddy. There's your award right there. And how about a defensive honor as well. Why not. It held the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Troy Smith to just four completions. Come on over here Big D. Derek Harvey congratulations. Well congratulations to the 2007 national champions the Florida Gators they join their basketball brethren as the national champions Tom Brenneman back up to you buddy Chris thank you very much oh what a night it'll be in Gainesville Florida Chris Lee celebrating a national championship tonight.